Well, we'll be touching nuggets on wisdom on how to find a suitable companion. Ngoba, we are not doing Doctrine Sunday where we deal with scripture on, on, on the basis of uh, expounding on doctrine, whether exegetically or topically. Nonetheless, I'm not going to tell you anything here outside scriptural counsel. Amen. So I would have us to know that Guban uh, Legi Loguti Ube Naleo knowledge, wisdom. And if you're single, you should be more interested. I must be looking at your face and you should be like, wow, from this. I never expect a Sunday where you can tell me on how to find the right one. Because I have seen in my generation people who go about it the wrong way. And they find themselves in serious issues. Until you make that wrong decision. Amen. And then was also a statement as an unscriptural, like I've married wrong. There's nothing like that. And I'll explain to you what it is. Nothing like you marry wrong. You marry right, you chose wrong. So you should be able to, to understand that marriage makes the wrong you make right. That's how powerful that decision for marriage is. Proverbs 18. And please pay attention, even if you don't say amen throughout the service in sharp. Yeah, 1822. Who so who so find the wife? Find it and obtain a favor of her. Amen. Can we all say this verse? Whosoever finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. In case you are late, you are saying, how can I find a wife? <laughs> uh, the verse is applicable to you because in men finding, you are involved in accepting that you are found. Are we clear on that? The man finds, but the woman accepts. Amen. It is important then Uguti, everyone in this house with full knowledge understands that it is the will of God for you to look and find and for others to find and others to accept. Say Amen. Nyas Uguti Bazalwani, you are involved in dating sites secretly. Amen. Abazalwani, Mabafia go high levels of desperation. They do things that they will not tell you in this assembly. And then they act holier than thou when the level of desperation is actually up and high there. Imagine Funoguti, Sipegi scripture. Hallelujah. This, um, these nuggets, if we call them nuggets, are important because you might have to share them with your children if they are not going to affect you. If you shut it already, you are not too late. You can prepare this for, for someone and also realize where you made mistakes as I talk. Amen. And born and excited, it must be the sound. Hallelujah. It is God through the mouth of Solomon who says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. It is God who says that. It was God in the beginning who created men, Adam, and out of the sight, the woman. And when they sinned, the men blamed God and said to God, the woman you gave me. It is no longer the duty of God to find for you. It's now your responsibility. God now guides you. God guides you to find. He no longer just brings a woman and says, that's the one, and then you go like bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Hence the verse says, because sometimes you only quote these verses when you are in those wedding receptions. 
and it becomes a catchy verse and then hey who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the lord go through the verse very slowly he who finds a wife finds a good thing finds a good thing and obtains favor from the lord you must know the part that belongs to god in that verse the role that god plays and your responsibility he who finds in other words it's your responsibility to search it's god's responsibility to say make sure that after you have found you are able to declare that this is a good thing that you have found so that when you have found a good thing you don't say it's a bad thing tomorrow i want us to take this verse serious you are going to search and find or accept a proposal after you have made a conclusion that it is a good thing and when you say with your own mouth after you have done the homework that you have found a good thing god is going to come in and says i'm going to give you favor with your good thing that comes from the lord let me say the verse again he who finds a wife and a husband if you want to finds a good thing make sure that you find a good thing that you will call a husband make sure that you find a good thing that you will call a wife and then the bible says and then you also find favor from the lord favor from the lord does not come until you do your part you find the good thing god gives you favor from him but now the question is how do you scripturally arrive at the point of saying i have found a good thing and also be careful the the scriptures are not requiring from you to find the perfect thing the scriptures are actually asking you to find a good thing in a fallen world that is why for every relationship there is a raw deal there's going to be that aspect that is not perfect about that person so you're probably going to find 70% of a good thing and 30% of not so good thing however it is your responsibility it is not god who says that's a good thing it was not god who said bone of my bone flesh of my flesh it was the man it should be you with excitement and with joy after you have found you then say it is a good thing and then god will bless it by granting it favor so in order for you to reach the status or the place where you can say lomzalwane engimtholile it's a good thing what are the things to look for what are the things that must be in place and how do you go about finding because if scripture opens a door for you to find is giving you the will of god is if you want a life partner go and search for a life partner go and look for a life partner but where do you go and how do you go about doing it and i pray as you now send right man and bona send serious now that you are now i i have your attention and you are listening attentively to a decision that when you make it it will turn your entire life around you would then know that you have no choice in this lifetime as long as you do not have the gift of celibacy you must know that it is one of the decisions that you are going to do and that you are going to do and take serious of course on a daily basis you are going to meet abantu in your life that are you know ngathi kuyafaneleka endleleni but unfortunately not everyone you meet is your wife or your husband even they even though they have certain qualities or attributes that you like about them god expects you to do your homework because he knows that the minute you make a decision 
he, you are going to make a permanent decision that he's going to honor with favor. So you don't take such a decision light. So I'll start by saying to all of us here, there's nothing wrong about being single. There's just that there are some things that single people are not allowed to do. Do you get it? There's nothing wrong about being single. If you get into the progression of scripture, Adam was single and it was fine for some time. Until God says it's not good. Added the wife. See the progression after sin. From monogamy to bigamy. From bigamy to polygamy. From polygamy to homosexuality. This is how things continue to escalate in as far as a man in his full sinful state is concerned. And then there's Jesus and Paul bringing us to celibacy. Jesus was not married. Paul was not married. And then there's Jesus and Paul promoting monogamy again. All these things are in your Bible. Some are condemned. Some are promoted. Um, and um, some are seriously condemned by God. So, we have this progression in terms of the impact of sin as it pertains to relationship. So the first thing that I want you to note, that should you be having a question in your mind, should I marry or should I not marry? It is not a bad thing if you decide not to marry. However, there is something that you must answer. Are you qualified in your singlehood to maintain that decision of not getting married? Which then should answer or which then will go in answering the question, do you have the gift of celibacy? So we must do a celibacy test. Which means there are people that are destined not to marry. Because they have a gift of handling the pressures that come with sexual immorality. And if you are still wondering what I'm talking about, Paul was one of them. Jesus was one of them. Yet when it comes to sexual temptation, you don't hear a story. Why? They concentrated on the kingdom and they then received grace. All of us here have self-control. You don't fast against lust. You exercise self-control. Say amen. I'm giving you the proper way of deliverance. You fall into sexual immorality, you don't fast. The, the way of repentance is the fruit of self-control. Sexual sin is dealt with through self-control. Don't pray too much. It will not solve the problems you have. You are a natural person. Discipline solves the problem. But now, inasmuch as we are required to all have self-control, when it comes to those who have the gift of celibacy, they have the grace to resist because God enables them as a gifting. However, we are not all gifted the same. Are we together? Okay, before I talk too much, let's read the scriptures. Matthew 19 verse 12. And JB read quick so I move from one point to the next. Konabo prada ni ngabahlu upi ene mele vazbige. Ugutibona, they are not for marriage. No man ngaba mutlegan jali, saz, yes onto ena announce, I'm gifted not to marry. And then we accept you, my brother. Just like we accept other people with other giftings, we accept you in your gift. Amen. It is a gift. Read. Matthew 19, verse 12. Yes. For there are some women which were so born from their mother's womb, and there are some women which were made women of men, and there be women which have made themselves women for the kingdom. Of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Okay, this is Jesus talking about marriage, divorce, and the issues regarding 
saying and people. He began by telling them that the standard of God is so high it does not permit divorce. And then they asked him, but what, what is Moses saying? Didn't he command this thing? And Jesus resp- replies by saying, by the way, Moses commanded you because of the hardness of the heart. So it's a concession. It's something that was permitted, not commanded. And then he goes on to say, to, 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 to deliberate on those matters regarding uh, the concession that is given in the scriptures. Uguti, only in the case of sexual immorality. If there's sexual immorality, then the other one has a right. Story for another day, right? Now, when the disciples hear Jesus talking this way, they go like, if it is so between a man and a woman, it's better not to marry. Verse number 12, which is the one we have just read. Jesus is responding to the concerns from the disciples after they hear that the standard of marriage is so high. And then he says to them, if a man is a eunuch, that word eunuch should not become a a very deep term. It simply means a single man. The one who is single because of some reasons. And there are three reasons. You can be single and not marry because he was addressing marriage and divorce and the difficulties that happens. He says you can be single and not marry if you were born with a physical condition, physical. So you can be exempt from marriage. That's number one. You can be single and not marry if your work makes you a eunuch. He was making reference in the days of Esther when you would have those eunuchs who were working in the king's harem. Uh, They were called the chamberlains and so on. Those guys, they were working in the palace. So in order for them to be accepted for employment, they, they were required to be castrated. Why? So that there is no heir from the throne that gets born illegitimately because there's a man in the king's palace. So in order for that man to work with the queens and the concubines and the wives of the king, he was required to be castrated. So some people were made to be single because of their employment. The third one, this is now involving Jesus. It also involves Paul. For the kingdom of God's sake, there are those who are made eunuchs because they have made themselves eunuch. They are gifted in that area. In order for you to see if this, this gift, where do you quote it in Fundisi? 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8 and 9. Let's quote the verse and see Ugutu Paul Utin in that verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8 and 9. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. Okay, even abide, even as, as I. Okay, continue. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. Mm-hmm. It's better to marry than to, to burn. It all depends on, do you have the gift for being single? Or if you burn, then marry. So the first thing, Ekmelesi Lungisela, when it comes to you saying, I want to find the will of God as to whether I must marry or not, the first thing that we should test, do you have the gift? Amen. You don't just say, I'm, I'm single and satisfied. We want to know, are you gifted? It means you would not have trouble with temptation. But what makes you not to have trouble with temptation is also connected or associated with the fact that you are also concentrating on God's work. By reason of God's work, you remain celibate and God grants you grace and then you have a gift. But Paul admits he wishes that some of the widows and the unmarried remain as he was, but he knows that we all have, we do not have the same gift from God. If the unmarried, meaning he was referring to those who were divorced previously, and now they are single. And then to the widow, those who were married also previously, now they are single. He says that if they want to marry, they can marry. If they want to remain, it will depend on the gift. If you have a gift, don't marry. If you don't have a gift, marry because you will burn with lust. Are we clear? 
So on the first test, we must actually check whether you have the gift or not. And then we move to the second test, the age test. I'm not talking about, bo, age is nothing but a number. I'm not there. The age test. Genesis 2 verse 4, you will see how the age test comes in. Because everything that I bring to your attention today is scriptural. And I pray that you, you understand that these are wisdom keys that will enable you to make the right decision before you say, I do. Genesis 2 verse 24, the first part, JB. Therefore shall the man leave his father and his mother. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his own wife. This is the test of maturity. When God created Adam and Eve, they were not created as children. They were created as adults. The other one was taken out of the rib, formed out of the dust of the ground as an adult. The one taken out of the root, formed as an adult. So it's a man who leaves his father and mother. So the decision to marry is not for minors, it's for adults. So then shall a man, a matured man, a fully grown man, a fully grown woman, the test of age. Now, I'm not talking about the age gap between a male and a female who are adults. I'm talking about it should not involve children who get into it because they are forced or under duress or they are in ignorance or they are confused. They should understand that the decision to marry belongs to a matured man and a matured woman who knows exactly what they are doing. So that test of maturity is necessary. Amen? That is why some of us here are parents. If the Lord tarries, if God grants more grace, you are going to see them get married. As they grow, there will be challenges. And those challenges, you would realize that you as a parent, you don't have a... A, 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 a problem as an adult. You are now going to have a problem as a parent because of the things that your children are now doing. So we need to prepare for such coma uh, games. Things become more serious. Amen. So the test of age also involves this. There are some of the youth we should just tell them get a qualification, be independent, and be sharp. So that when you bring someone in your life, you are not insecure about what they have. You have your own things as well. sharp. We ask that good thing, you are going to say it's a good thing, not because you are looking for a provider, you are looking for a husband. Do you get that? So the whole issue of age is very, very much important. So unfortunately, the government dictates for us the age of maturity on our children. See that they say 17 or 18, 16, 13, Mutwana can do an abortion and all those things that are out. So it is the responsibility of the parents. Please, you are going to reach a stage where you need to strike a deal with your children. Before you get into bringing someone in your life, make sure that you accomplish this and this and this. And from there, I would have known. I would know. I will intervene. I will know. But when it is serious, would so could it? Because it will actually communicate the state of readiness. It's possible to desire that your body can desire something, but you are not ready for the responsibility of marriage. Say amen. In fact, which is actually the, sec the third test, the test of readiness. After we test the issue of maturity, we must check the state of readiness. Are you ready to, because some people think marriage is about, oh, we are going to sleep together and then everything is going to be fine. No, afterwards, you are going to become a father. The other one is going to become a mother. Now there's family, now there's responsibility. Now you are going to see that this thing is adding more responsibility and accountability on your side. It's not just the excitement of uh, being on Instagram and posting pictures and doing stuff. 
is more than that. Yes, you are burning, but burn right. Burn in wisdom and do things godly. Because someone will say to me, but Mfundis, how is this subject spiritual? <laughs> how is it helping us here as a church? Then I will say to you, you must know that 90% of the problems we have in churches come from relationships. It's people who, who took, married the wrong people, regretting this one, took that one, and the other one is thinking, you know, this subject, that's why I'm saying Latech, is a very serious subject because your whole life can be turned upside down because you took a decision casually and that decision that you took was so serious that it invited the seriousness of life. Now you want to get out casually on something so serious. And then you realize you are not permitted. I love what Tumelo said last week. He said marriage is like a door that only has a handle outside, but inside no handle. God takes this serious. So hence I started with that verse that said, he who finds a wife, you must be the one, not your pastor, not your friends that say, that's my good thing. And you don't change your mind about it tomorrow because of other circumstances. You said you have found a good thing. God comes with heavenly authority and grants favor to your good thing. That's a very serious decision. Uh-huh. But I know we are living in a time you can do whatever you want. God is not honored and many other things. If other people who are senior and elderly have done it, who am I? Nami, I'm having my own problems. Yo, Mfundis, you are not in my shoes. But it was you who found your own good thing prematurely, quickly. Now you are regretting it. Now you are faced with problems where scripture does not provide solutions, only more difficult, uh, difficulties. And you feel like a, a prisoner of the scriptures. And it started so nice. You saw each other, worship team vibe. It was nice. Hanti, Hanti, that was not a beginning of good life tomorrow. That's the beginning of a problem. And you saw other people get married, they did their part very well, you did not do your part very well, they succeed, you fail. And these are the problems. And here's the why this thing is more of a problem. Do you know that it even affects you, ministerial? That a man that cannot lead this family well, cannot lead in the house of God. So don't do, don't do your prelude until you fix your mess at home. Can you see the authority? That it, you will not even enjoy your spiritual life because you chose to marry someone quickly. Hallelujah. Or we not desperate one ako high. age, what? 39, 30, 40, 45, 50, 60, 67, 70,000. So, desperation ya wrong. Because you I tell you, you better be singing. That miserable. And I know, Mus, I'm, and I'm going to come to that one. Yabo brother, ba, ba, take a tongue, bo, sister, ba, ba, sharp, bo, bo. Aksi, ka, ba, ki, amen, or ki, thank you, or ki, hallelujah, or ki, or ki, tell, I don't know. Praise the Lord. The test of readiness. To tell the truth, most people are not ready. If you can really ask them, they are not ready. They are just burning. And then they make those decisions based on the flesh. So the flesh is deciding for them what they should do now. And after the flesh has decided, the flesh goes back to the refrigerator. That's about, it goes back to normal. And then when you are faced with a human being, on a daily basis, who tells you where to get off? Because you don't marry the flesh, you marry the spirit, soul, and body. 
and you're going to be staying with that soul for the remainder of your lifetime. That's what marriage is. Lifelong covenant of companionship. If you are not ready, don't do it. You is fine. Let them label you only fit. And please, man, stop thinking because you are single, you are cursed. Stop this deliverance nonsense. God leads. God blesses. As you engage in your relationship, my man, you're already accepted in the in beloved. All spiritual blessings are yours. Right? So, if, if the Holy Spirit, if you get into prayer, the Holy Spirit will guide you on such issues. On a serious note. But it's fine. Go ahead, make your wrong decision. We'll open the room for counseling and other things. The fourth test, the prayer test, the most ignored part of this uh, transaction. Prayer test. Basalwan, you don't pray today and you, now you see your wife tomorrow. Even if you have seen someone that you like, you pray and you pray long and you pray hard. This thing of I saw a vision, she's the one. After seeing a vision, you still pray. You don't see a vision and you decide, yeah, the man of God prophesied me saying he did some prophetic romance. You know prophetic romance? When you are mesh making people through prophets, the Lord says, uh, that's your wife. That's prophetic romance. <laughs> so you don't, you don't marry someone because, 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 just because, in fact, let me put it this way. You don't marry someone only because an angel visited you. The key word there is only because. There are other contributing factors. Angel Gabriel visited Mary, but who ended up pregnant and carrying the baby? It was not an angel. It was not an angel that was carrying that baby. That baby was carried by Mary. Mary is the one that had to go through the humiliation of saying she committed fornication. The angel is gone. God's will done. Mary, you are going to... Also, it contributes to the fact that the fact that it is the will of God, it does not exempt or remove suffering or problems. You can still divorce. Having married someone, an angel showed you. You are led. That's the one. Spiritual things are for guidance in terms of God's will. Who told you God's will makes people perfect? The will of God does not make people perfect. The will of God shows you God's will for you. What you can handle and what you can care. People are trying to marry perfect people here. You'll never find any perfect person, never. You are going to find 70% if you are lucky. Good, 30% mess. And God will say, that 30 percent you can handle so Mary. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> we act surprised when there are problems in marriages. There are always problems in marriages because you are trying to put two people that are different, coming from different backgrounds, making them one. So get out of that story of Alibaba and the 40 things and your fairy tales and your butterflies in the stomach and get to understand that this thing is real. You don't just marry because of a feeling. Okay. This is volume. Volume. The test of prayer. You pray. You really, really pray. You know why? Because there are spiritual strongholds or principalities that are targeting marriages. So if you don't pray for a marriage, if your marriage does not begin in prayer, how would you sustain it? Because it must be sustained by prayer. Because there's going to be forces. A little thing like toothpaste, the whole house is in a mess. If you don't have a TV, you don't have a TV. The problems. No, marriage is not me wearing a uh, 
a traditional attire and my wife compliments the outfit. Those are for the eyes of the people. The real thing is happening down there at home. So the test of prayer, this thing must be sustained. So before all you think about, when am I going to pray, pray Lobola? When are you going to pray, brah? Because you can pray Lobola for the wrong person. You can pray Lobola for someone you did not pray for. First thing first. And also, I mean we are spirit, soul, and body. This thing begins in the spirit. So that is why all these things that I'm counting are spiritual things. Do you have the gift of self as spiritual thing? Maturity, spiritual thing. Readiness, spiritual thing. Prayer, spiritual thing. And you are still going to come to the test of godliness. And when I talk about godliness, I'm not talking about you getting into a relationship with the person in order for you to find out whether they are godly or not. You check on how they behave within the community of believers. That is godly. That their godliness is determined by how they behave within a community of holy people called the saints. This is how you are, you are going to know what are you taking home or what are you saying yes to. You are busy ignoring the signs. You are only going to remember them after you said I do. Whose fault it is? It's your fault. But it's not coming to prayer. You already see the signs. But because he's a brother who drives a gusheshe, looks good, and you are thinking, we're going to do gusheshe in the family. <laughs> Children at home will need a father. Children at home will need a priest that will teach the family on how to pray and how to raise children in a godly way. So that's what marriage is. Not how he looks outside there. It's fine. Make it all about looks and kick and bobozas and how he talks. Oh my God, and all those things. The test of godliness. The test of godliness. Character. Our character shows fruits. You can't hide that thing. If you are not a good person, you are not going to produce good fruits. And we're going to see it sooner or later. You can even hide it so well. But sooner or later, fruits will show that you have an issue privately. Don't you read Numbers 23? that tells you your sin will find you out? It is God who says that literally, whatever you do, it will find you out. Imagine when other people are on the journey, godly finding wives, your sin is busy finding you. Another test, a test of calling and giftings. What are you called to do? What is your ministry? and things like that, things to consider. Cannot ignore those things. Especially agreement and compatibility in those things. Number seven, the test of faith. Just checking time. Are we in the same faith? By the way, you are not required to marry an unbeliever. Angas Nitatable Doctrine Bazalan. Umzalan is not given the right to marry an unbeliever. It is wrong for a Christian to marry someone of a different faith. It is wrong. I, I, I am not giving you a suggestion. I'm giving you God's counsel. Read the verse. Read the verse. This is the number verse. First Corinthians 7 39. So that they can hear. You can marry whoever you choose, but only in the Lord. You can choose free will, but only in the Lord. Yes, five minutes remaining. Yes. The wife is bound by the law as long as the husband, as long as her husband with her. Yeah. And if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. Did you hear that word only? Only where? I have a son, Kuruman, I'm sure when it's only where, Bazalwan. In the what? Axi policy about the Israel. Only in the Lord. I have a baba zalwani bayenzan. Only in the Lord. Mamela, you don't marry for evangelism. 
You don't marry in order to convert them. You will see flames. Do you hear me, Brother Lord? It says only in the, in the Lord. Because the minute you do that, you are activating that the kingdom of God, the other side, will show you, or you marry me, this whole thing of do not be unequally yoked. That's what we are talking about. In fact, when it happens, you will realize that the boyfriend would have seen that you have actually compromised your faith for him. And they did not compromise anything for you. And if they don't live with the rule of sex before marriage is a sin, we already know what is already happening there. You tasted what you should not have tasted. But you still want to be a child of God. And nobody's judging you. By the way, God is forgiving you all the time. Wow! But let me tell you, forgiveness and the decisions you make and consequences. Forgiven, but you will, do whatever decision you made, you stay and live with it and there will be consequences. I mean, if you can just decide now, I want to go and make a baby, I'm so single, if I can just get a child, you know, I don't want anything, I would do whatever, uh, artificial insemination, I just want to get a child, I just want to get a child, I'm single, my man, the baby won't be the church's baby, it will be your baby. I told you, even if Gabriel comes, it is Mary who gets pregnant. It is you who's going to be living with the responsibility of raising that baby. So it's cool, it's like... What? In faith, only in the faith, only in the Lord. You can't elect someone and adopt someone into salvation with your blood. Only the blood of Jesus can do that. Test number eight, the test of family. Which is an important point. Why? Because this test includes authority. Sometimes if you want to know how a brother behaves, you must ask the sister at home. Because how they treat the sister, we already know how he's going to treat the wife. So you don't want to do that homework. The problem, ever so long, is this. They meet back or man. That's the problem. <laughs> you only say yes to marriage, not to just a relationship. You say yes to marriage after having done your homework. So if it is dating, you should know that it is not for mating, but for gathering data. Do your homework. You'll be the one living with the man for the rest of your life. Do your part. Only to find out if you, you will find out that by not doing your part, you are simply postponing the problems. Translating them after marriage, then you see them flames. The test of family authority, where a person comes from, is very much important for you to know. Don't just marry ignorantly. You must know. Number nine, the test of the past. How many X's and Y's? No, I mean it. How many X's, Ash, or ten? Then you ask the second question, why? Because you must know the history of the person that you're going to make your wife so that you are not told by as, as a surprise tomorrow for this, this story. Now it is coming as a cancer, but it was supposed to come before counseling. The past. What issues do you have? What issues do they have? If you check all the things that I am saying, they are quickly helping you to determine whether you, what you have is good or bad. So that you can all say to God, I have found a good thing, and then God says, fine, marry her and obtain faith. It's a process, this thing. And it's a very serious and delicate process. The test of the past cannot be ignored. You must find out about the potential partner. You must find out. Number 10, the test of friends. 
if he is hanging around a company of people you can know, you also know that bad company corrupts good manners, right? So the company a person keeps will tell you about the person. So you ignore that, you will be in trouble. Tomorrow you are married, he or she goes back to the bad company. It spills over into the marriage, then there's trouble at home. Because you've ignored an important aspect. Friends. And by the way, after you marry, <laughs> you lose friends. Yes, it's a girl and you automatically can't. Because you have to be a girl. Yes, that thing. Test number 11, financial test. There was no amen all this time. Now there's an amen because of finances. Mara, whether you like it or not, you want to ignore it or any, you want to, you know, downplay it or do whatever, it's an important part. It can lead to divorce. The test of finances. Romance without finance is I didn't say that. <laughs> Ro romance without finance is bad. <laughs> because you need money to buy that ring, to put on that ponytail, to take care of all the datings that happens there. But also, if it is marriage, lobola the wife and many other things. You don't, Mamela, this, this is not to suggest that if there is no money, there won't be marriage. This is to say it plays that part. So something must happen to fix the money issue. And then you ladies who work so hard for yourselves, and you meet them lazy guys who do not care, and then you marry them and you cry foul afterwards. That was your decision, not your pastor's. Akir, you said that thing that is not working is your good thing. Why are you complaining? <laughs> hey, I'm so serious. Yes. You said, Akir, Nataba. Akir, it's fine. Keep paying work. Keep paying work. How cool. No one is going to fight you for that. But please, don't raise it up tomorrow. And then, choice. You have to say, you to say, you have to say, you have to say, Hence, I said you should pray. This thing is not about money. You should pray. If God leads you that you are going to build someone or build your life together or work on each other, whatever you call it, eh? the things you do, you people of God, eh? the things you do, whatever you call it, but make sure that there is no foul play. You are clear about what you are getting into and you understand what it means so that tomorrow you don't cry. I can take this, I can take that. And then the 12th test, the test of attraction. Never marry someone you're not attracted to. Even if they can be prophecies, never. Never. If you are not attracted, you go like night because there's going to be cheating, fornication, and adult. Don't marry someone that you are not attracted to. Don't even try to grow in your attraction of them. It must just be like, oh, wow, love at first sight. <laughs> Another interesting thing, you, you actually get to like people more as you spend time with them. So please, uh, do yourself a favor, get to know the person. Get to know the person. Don't just come and say, hallelujah, glory. She's the one. Because Runa Rata Moses, death was part. Did you hear that part? The till death. Ah, death. 
Because now the problems that we are going to have are going to become church problems, believers' problems, scripture problems that we need to solve in order to accommodate you within church things. And then you'll feel like they are condemning me, they are judging me. You will not like to listen to sermons like this one because they are targeting you. Hanti, it was that casual decision that you made. And you made it on speed dial. <laughs> it was like, wow, here I'm in. How one is. You know that you are in, but you don't know, you don't know that you don't know that you will not go out. The scriptures will say stay in. 13. The compatibility test. No, I'm not talking about wearing the same <laughs> trouser and dress traditional or colors on Sunday as a couple. You can do that if you want to do it. I'm talking about friendship between the two. It's a simple term. Companionship, compatibility are linked. Have you married your friend, Wanakohai? Your chomi. Because when other things cannot happen physically, you must remain with your chomi and still enjoy their presence and their space. Because physical things cannot become the reason why you marry. Because here's the thing as a believer, you've got spiritual needs, you've got soulish needs, you've got spiritual, you've got physical needs. So if you only marry for physical needs, you are, you are going to be living with the soul. Amen. Eligibility test. That is an important test. Please, let's read the Bible. The Bible will tell us, try to find the NLT Bible on that. Yeah, read Leviticus chapter number 18, verse 8 to 18, if I'm correct. Verse 8. Do not have sexual relations with any of your father's wives, for this would violate your father. Did you hear that? That's a close relative. Now, what I want you to see from there in terms of issues of eligibility, in terms of family, is that you must be careful that you don't marry a close relative and you don't know it because you did not do the check. Do you see that? The eligibility test and all these verses that we are reading is check that you don't marry anyone who is a close relative. Continue with the verse because Leviticus puts it very plain and simple and clear. Verse 9. Do not have sexual relations with your sister or half-sister, whether she is your father's daughter or your mother's daughter, mm. whether she was born into your household or someone else's. Mm. Continue. Do not have sexual relations with your friend's daughter, whether she is your son's daughter or your daughter's daughter, for this would violate yourself. Uh huh. Continue. Do not have sexual relations with your stepsister, the daughter of any of your father's wives, uh -huh. for she is your sister. Did you hear that? Continue. Do not have sexual relations with your father's sister, for she is your father's close relative. Hmm. Are we done? Are you on verse 18 already? Can you? Verse 12. 12. Verse 18. Yeah. Do not have sexual relations with your mother's sister, for she is your mother's close relative. Verse 14. Do not violate your uncle, your father's brother, by having sexual relations with his wife. For she is your aunt. Hmm. Do not have sexual relations with your daughter-in-law. She is your son's wife. So you must not have sexual relations with her. Verse 16. Do not have sexual relations with your brother's wife. For this will violate your heart. Do not have sexual relations with both a woman and her daughter. And do not take her daughter, whether her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter, and have sexual relations with her. They are close relatives, and this would be a wicked act. While your wife is living, do not 
marry her sister and have sexual relations with her, for they would be rivals. Can you hear that? While your wife is still living, don't marry the sister. It's well, got an option when she's dead, but if she's alive, God detested because they will become rivals. Eligibility test. Can you hear the will of God in these matters? The two last tests. The health test and the gender test. Two important tests. Health test. Ooh. Health test. How would some of you get under get under road check? Press the test and then linearly risk our anti visa because now we will be sitting with the problem. Buang need to card the status salon. That's all. Hey, what you like to do? I can you are marrying a good thing. If they are a good thing, they will tell you their true status so that you can know what to do with it if you want to or not. And then lastly, especially for the guys, the gender test. People are transgenders today. You'll bring someone into the office, Uruwe na unyala musat, khandi history akhaiki munna. You didn't do the test. You just came and said, I don't need church. Church is boring. I'm remarrying this lady. Khandi, you are marrying a, a man who is now a lady. Take these things for granted. And they'll come back and bite you. I have given you the will of God on how to find a good thing. And I'm telling you, it's not an easy thing to do. You must do it carefully. You must not approach it casually. You must trust God for that. And you must take care of yourself. And I'm saying all this thing for your interest, for your protection. And for God's glory. Relationships are the main reasons why we have problems. And all and many of them happen because we did not take care to see that we test before we say, I do. The minute you say, I accept a person in my life, you must know that you are not accepting perfection. What is the greatest rule that makes marriage to work? And what is the other one opposite to it that makes it not to work? Two words, selflessness and selfishness. Marriage is for selfless people. If you are selfish, don't marry. Because in marriage, we don't take, we give all the time. We were designed by God to marry. God has provided ways on how we should enter into that relationship and to sustain it in, in which way and stuff like that. So do the test. The test of finances must also check. The test of the past, were they married before? How many children do they have? Can you handle that? And don't cry about it when you are now married. So to marry, it's an adult decision. God bless you.